Okay, so in chapter 2, the topic is all about describing motion. How do we describe the motion of an object and what types of variables do we use? So the first thing that our chapter describes is what's known as the average speed, and I'm just going to write average as AVG for short. So average speed, right? And your book defines the average speed as the distance traveled divided by the time of travel. And this shouldn't really be anything new um, because we experience this all the time. Um, if we take, for instance, let's say we take a 100 mile journey, right? And it takes two hours to do it, all right? What's the average speed for the trip? All right, what's the average speed for the trip? Well, just plugging in our formula there, whoops, a v the average speed is just going to be our distance of 100 miles divided by 2 hours and that's just going to be 50 miles per hour or 50 mph now one of the things we like to do is instead of write out these long words, right? This is a bit of a clumsy equation here. What we like to do is instead compact everything down into symbols. So let's let our average speed just be equal to the variable s, our distance, our distance be equal to d, and our time of travel be equal to t. And we can write this much more compactly as S equals D over T. All right, so here's our formula for our average speed. Now, what do we mean by the word average? Let's just talk about that for a second. So average, when we're talking about the average speed, again, uh, this word average is simply just talking about the total distance that you travel divided by the total time it took for the uh, trip to be taken. Now, let's contrast this with another notion called the instantaneous speed. Okay, and the instantaneous speed is uh, more along the lines of the rate at which an object is traveling at any one particular instant in time. Okay, so it's the rate at which an object is traveling at any given instant. Okay. Maybe that's a good paraphrase. At any given instant. All right. And so, if you want to think of the difference between average speed and instantaneous speed, okay, so average speed would be the type of speed that you calculate if you uh, use your odometer use an odometer and a stopwatch. So let's say you're taking a trip and it can really be anywhere and you hit the uh, reset button on your odometer and you start your stopwatch and you start your stopwatch right when you start uh, your car moving and you travel some distance and that's clocked by your odometer and you uh, do it in some interval of time and that's measured by your stopwatch and the dividing uh, div division of those two, the odometer divided by the stopwatch, would give you your average speed. Now your instantaneous speed okay, is the speed that you're going at a specific instant.
So this would be the speed measured by, say, a uh, radar gun. It doesn't matter what your overall average speed for any trip is. If a policeman clocks you going above the speed limit with his radar gun, uh, then he is measuring your instantaneous speed, and if that instantaneous speed is above the posted speed limit, uh, by law he is allowed to pull you over. All right, so instantaneous speed is the speed that you're going at any one specific instant. Okay. Now, in higher uh, levels of physics, we have nice formulas for the instantaneous speed. At this level, without the use of calculus, we really don't have a good way to talk about the instantaneous speed. So we will not do too much uh, with the instantaneous speed mathematically. All right. Uh, but for almost all of our purposes, when we're talking about the term speed, we will use the average speed and we'll use the formula S equals D over T. Okay. So that's all about speed. And uh, again, it is simply the rate at which you're traveling. Now, there's another term that often gets confused with speed. Okay. And that's the term velocity. Okay, and so now we need to formally define the difference between speed and velocity, and that difference is that velocity includes one more component to it. Okay, so the velocity of an object is defined as the speed an object is going and the direction it's traveling in. Sometimes we call this the direction of motion. Okay, So it's the speed an object is going in the direction it's traveling in. Okay, So that is what the term velocity means. Now mathematically, okay, we don't, again at this level, really have a good way to take this whole direction idea into account. Um, so it, it's uh, more or less for our purposes the velocity will also be equal to the distance over the time and this is valid okay this formula is valid for one-dimensional motion okay so if an object is moving in a straight line and its direction isn't changing then the only uh, quantity that we need to be worried about is the speed okay so for one dimensional motion this formula is perfectly valid okay all right um, this brings up a uh, vital difference um, between the two types of objects that speed and velocity are and let's denote what those are right now so speed belongs to a class of objects called scalars whereas velocity belongs to a class of objects called vectors okay so we have these two classes of objects scalars and vectors and a scalar is just a, a quantity it can be a measurement it doesn't necessarily have to be a measurement but it can be a measurement and it just has magnitude So because speed is a scalar, when we say that an object's speed is 55 miles per hour or 20 meters per second or whatever the case may be, that uh, quantity, that value, is the magnitude of that scalar or the magnitude of that speed, for instance. Okay? So vectors, because they contain speed and direction, and speed is a form of magnitude, right? so vectors contain magnitude... and direction okay and some more uh, examples of each okay some more examples of each scalars uh, another example of a scalar would be the quantity energy okay 
mass as a scalar. It doesn't talk. It doesn't make any sense to talk about something being two kilograms in the x direction uh, or in the positive y direction. That just doesn't make any sense. So uh, an object's mass is just simply how much uh, stuff it contains, and that is not directionally dependent. Um, so that is just an object with a magnitude. So energy, mass, temperature. and quantities like these are all considered scalars. Okay, So some other uh, vectors, and this is the vector that we'll talk about next time, but that vector will be acceleration. Uh, force is a vector. Okay, And um, those are the two big ones that we will talk about in this course, right? Acceleration and force. Um, uh, another scalar, another big scalar that we'll talk about uh, is also work, all right? But this just kind of gives you a sense of the types of things that are vectors and the types of things that are scalars. Oh yeah, one more very, very important vector. Oops, I dropped my cap. One more very important vector that we'll talk about uh, in the future is momentum, all right? And uh, that will turn out to be a very, very significant vector. Um, and, of course, we'll get to that uh, down the road. But let's start talking now about this idea of acceleration. Okay? So what is acceleration? Right? So acceleration... The verbal definition of acceleration is simply a change in speed over some time interval. Okay. Now, there's a very specific uh, caveat with this definition of acceleration. Again, okay, this is for one-dimensional motion. Okay, this is for one-dimensional motion. Um, if we were going to be a little bit more specific, and we will use this definition later on, okay, the more general... Uh, definition of acceleration is a change in velocity over time. Okay, uh, but for our purposes, again, especially in this chapter, we're only going to be worried about one-dimensional motion. Almost all of our accelerations in this course and all of them in this chapter will only involve a change in speed. Now. You might be curious, how can an object change direction without changing its speed? Um, and that would be using this de uh, definition of acceleration. And the answer to that would be an object moving in a circle, like a race car. Okay, so let's say that our race car was right here, and it was going in this direction around the track. And it, let's just for, of course, race cars do change speed, but let's assume that it doesn't change speed. Um, and a few instances later, it's down here with the same speed, but now the direction has changed. Okay, So in this case, there would be an acceleration because the uh, direction is changing, but uh, that's a little bit beyond uh, the description mathematically of what we're going to uh, talk about now. But uh, speaking of mathematically, let's write down the formula in mathematical terms and we can write A is equal to V over T, okay? And um, technically, your book in uh, on page 25, in verbal form, okay, they use average acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the time required to produce that change, right? And that's what the symbol cap this triangle looking thing it's a capital delta okay it's the greek letter delta and it literally means change in okay 
So let's just do a quick example. Okay, so as an example, let's look at a situation where, let's say a car starts from rest. and achieves a final speed of 20 meters per second after 4 seconds. What is the acceleration? All right. What is the acceleration? Okay, so let's unpack this a little bit because there's a lot of information in here and this is a typical type of problem that we're going to see in this course. All right. So first things first, we notice that the car starts from rest. All right. So anytime you see this phrase, starts from rest or from rest or goes to rest uh, or something of that nature, that's telling you something about the velocity. So if it starts from rest, that tells us that the initial velocity, or vi, is going to equal zero. And I'm going to put 0, 0.0. And then it achieves a final speed of 20 meters per second. And we can say that the final speed, or the final velocity, and again in one dimension, uh, as long as you're moving in one dimension, they're the same thing, uh, 20 meters per second and we technically need our meters per second here and our time interval from the time that it starts from rest as soon as it starts to press on the accelerator all right as soon as it steps on the gas after four seconds it's then going 20 meters per second so the time interval is four seconds and we want to know what the acceleration is right now notice what I've done okay this is how you should attack all of your problems. Okay? What you want to do is go back to the problem and pull out all of the information and correlate that with your symbols. Okay? So then you can list your symbols as I've done here. Right? And this gives you a very powerful way of looking at your symbols and once you have your symbols you can then look and see what equation or equations you need. Right? And uh, so we're given that the object starts from rest and that's our uh, initial velocity. We're given that the final speed or VF is 20 meters per second and after four seconds that's our time interval. And so now we've compacted all of the information from this long word problem into four symbols, vi, vf, t, and a. And because I have the question mark by a, or that's the quantity we're looking for, I now need to look for an equation or equations that have this value in it along with these other values. And of course, the equation that we need is just the definition of acceleration, this delta v over t, and what the delta V, this change in means, okay, so this change in V technically means, right, when we're talking about a change in, we're talking about a, a difference. So I have some final quantity and I'm subtracting my initial quantity from it. So for delta V, I'm going to be taking my final velocity minus my initial velocity, okay. So I can technically write acceleration as VF minus VI all over t. Okay? All I've done is plugged in this right down here which took the place of this via this equals sign right here. Okay? So because delta v equals vf minus vi I can plug that in and we have that. So now I have everything that I need and I can start to now plug in my numbers and I can say a is going to be equal to 20 minus 0 and all of that's going to be in meters per second divided by 5 or I'm sorry divided by 4 I got ahead of myself divided by 4 seconds and that gives us a final answer 
of 5. And what are my units? Okay, so meters divided by seconds divided by seconds, right? So this is meters divided by seconds divided by seconds, or meters times 1 over seconds times 1 over seconds, and that gives me meters over seconds squared. Right? So this is going to be 5 meters per second squared. Right? So your accelerations are going to be given in units of a distance over a time squared. Okay, that's the definition of the units of acceleration, a distance over a time squared. All right? So now we have the appropriate units on the right-hand side of the equation that correlate with the quantity we're looking for, and we can justify this formula partially based on that argument that our, our units are correct. So that brings up a very good point. Uh, whenever you're working out problems, your units must agree. So for instance, let's say you're solving an equation for velocity or some final velocity and there's a bunch of junk over here and after a few steps of algebra you come up with an answer of 14 meters for your final velocity. You know you've made a mistake somewhere. Either this initial equation that you set up was wrong or there was an error somewhere in here in your algebra, but the bottom line is that your units on this side of the equation must match the units on this side of the equation. Okay, Your units must match. Or else the equation is wrong. And the best way to the, the place to attack this is in your very first equation. Okay? In your very first equation, look and see what the units are over here and make sure that they agree with the quantity that you're trying to uh, calculate over here. If those units do not match up, then you know that you have made a mistake in setting up your equation. And that can save you a lot of problems because if you realize this equation is wrong to start with, then you won't go through all of your algebra and then realize your equation might have been wrong. So you can save yourself a lot of grief if you check out your units uh, in your first step or two before, instead of waiting until the very end. All right? Okay, so we'll do one more example uh, of using the uh, acceleration equation and then I'll show you an example of how to uh, look at your units and make sure that they all match up. Okay, so now let's look at a situation where an object, whoop, an object starts from rest and accelerates at a rate of 3.0 meters per second squared for uh, 5 seconds. Okay, what is the final speed? Okay. Um, so we have a very similar situation to what we did last time, except this time we're not solving for the final speed, we're solving for the acceleration here. Okay, So let's list out all of our information. Okay, So our object starts from rest, so we automatically know that our vi is equal to zero. Here we're given that the acceleration is 3.0 meters per second squared, and our time interval is equal to five seconds. Okay, And now we want to know what Vf is. So now we need an equation that relates all of these variables, um, but instead of solving for the acceleration, now we're solving for Vf. Well, it turns out that we can still use the equation we used before. Okay, So we can still use this equation
but now we need to do a little bit of algebra to solve for this value vf. Okay? So the first step to doing so, we need to isolate vf by itself, is to multiply both sides by t. And that'll cause t to cancel out. And I'm also going to flip flop the equa uh, variables on each side of the equal sign. And you can do that with impunity because both sides are equal. So I can say vf minus vi is equal to at. And I have a minus vi on this side of the equation. So I'm going to add vi to both sides of the equation. And this minus vi and this plus vi are going to cancel out. And I get vf is equal to at plus vi. All right? And now we can plug in our variables. Remember that vi was 0 and a was 3.0 and t, uh, let's, let's be consistent here, this is 3.0 meters per second squared and t was for 5 seconds and so this is going to be 3.0 meters per second squared times a time of 5 seconds plus 0 meters per second and that equals 15 well 15 meters per second so after five seconds of accelerating at three meters per second squared the object had a final speed of 15 meters per second All right so now let's do an example of how to uh, look at an equation and see if its uh, units on both sides of the equal sign are uh, valid. All right. Okay, so let's look at uh, a, a very similar example, uh, but let's say this time you were given uh, VF, A, and T, and you needed to solve, so these were your givens, and you needed to solve for VI. And so you start with the equation A equals VF minus VI over T and you do some algebra and you come up with the equation VI equals VF minus AT. Okay, so how can you determine what the units are on both sides of this equation? All right, well you know speeds are going to be, velocities are going to be given in terms of meters per second and so the initial velocity will have meters per second, the final velocity will have meters per second. You know that the acceleration is given in terms of meters per second squared, and the time is given in terms of seconds. Okay. Now, units work exactly like variables do. You can multiply them and you can add them, but you can only add up quantities that have the same, pardon me, units. And so, uh, we have a VF with units of meters per second here. I can only add and subtract objects or values uh, to this final velocity quantity that have the same units as meters per second. So let's see what happens with this AT term. Right? So we see that I have meters per second squared times seconds, or the same thing as seconds over one. Right. Uh, and what we can do is one of our, or our seconds up top here will cancel out with one of the seconds down here and we'll just be left with meters per second here. Right? So now we have meters per second minus meters per second which is valid because they're the same units and that, those are the same units that must be on the left hand side of the equation which they are because we know that the left hand side is in velocity and so what this what this does do for you is tell you that the equation is consistent okay it does not necessarily mean it's correct okay I must stress that this does not tell you if the equation is correct but if your units did not boil down to being the exact same on both sides then the equation is incorrect 
okay? Uh, but an example of how the equation might have the same units but might not be uh, exactly correct is there could be, uh, say, a factor of one-half in here sometimes, or maybe there's a factor of pi somewhere that you uh, accidentally forgot or uh, divided by somewhere. Uh, so constants like this, like factors of one half, factors of two, uh, pure numbers, uh, whether they be real uh, whole numbers um, or uh, numbers like pi, irrational numbers that just go on forever, those types of numbers do not carry units with them. Okay, so if a if a factor of two crops up in your derivation, that number won't have a unit with it. So if you forget those, then the equation might not be exactly correct, but if the units are not right, then the equation is definitely not correct. Okay? So this gives you a good way of, once you get your equation set up, uh, to determine whether or not the units, uh, or it gives you a good first step in determining the validity of the equation. All right, that's enough for now, and next time we will look at graphing and how to determine the distance of an object um, given a uh, either an initial velocity or, or a, a final velocity and then also an acceleration at a time. All right? And we will more formally talk about what this idea of acceleration actually means as well. All right? So we will see you next time and goodbye until then.